Hello guys and welcome. I have a few new macros to show you. I wanted to do a video for each of them, but I thought why not include them all together in one video? And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So let's start with the first one, which is called Refine Mat. And this will actually work very similarly to the Refine Mat in After Effects. So let me add one of the other macros that I'm gonna uh, demo today, which is the Roto Helper. Uh, actually, this one is um, rip off of uh, uh, the same, actually the same macro made by CB Super, and uh, it's actually the same thing. But I made uh, these resolution independent, so no matter what the resolution of the footage that you will pipe in, it will be always. Uh, correct. Sorry CB Super if I ripped your macro, so credit to you for the idea which I find to be very useful. So um, how does the Roto Helper work? You actually add a mask to the Roto Helper, in this, in this case it will be a polygon tool and you will you have just start and do your masking and once you've done with your masking, you will be actually able to see what is that you have been selecting and you can make the selection more or less visible. And once, and once you've done with the actual process of uh, rotoring, you can actually remove the color and multiply by the mask and you get the uh, masked result that you would need. So um, I will pipe in the background the original footage and the mat separately. And what the refined mat will be trying and do is to actually bring back some of the details of the footage. So you have a radius and you have also a uh, edge detail which will help recover the detail as you can see and this is the actual result maybe we can dispel yeah something like that let me try and merge this over a background and as you can see uh, if i compare the actual roto from the result given by the refined mat, you are very much better suited with the refined mat. Maybe I can, yeah, something like that. Maybe try box instead of Gaussian. The filter in this case will give you different result, which uh, is something that I suggest you to try when doing matte refining. And don't forget that you can uh, correct the fringes by using this uh, fringe tab, actually, the spill tab, not the fringe tab, sorry. And as you can see, uh, the result from this mat to this is, I mean, it's really impressive. Okay, that's the refined mat. Let me give you another demonstration. In this case, I mean, it's a green screen, so you guess it's pretty easy. Let's see what happens if I use this image and go back to the Roso helper again and pipe in a polygon mask and, and something like that. And multiply by mask, yes and add a refine mat. Again, we want the two input to be properly connected. And as you can see right out of the bat, we are getting some of the hair back. Let's see what happens if I merge this on top of my previous background. And as you can see, these is not perfect but is way better than you know this
considering what we are starting from, it's a crazy result actually. Okay, let's move to the next one. And for that I need to enable the noise reduction, which was made with a neat video. And let's add the additive gear. So this one is a little bit more complex than the previous ones and you have to uh, follow the order of these um, tabs in order to get the proper operation. So the first thing that you have to do, as said, is the clean plate. If you try and uh, sample the color from the actual additive gear, it will go bonkers. So you want to sample from the actual node itself. You just need to erode and then you want to grow the edges. The second step is move to the flatten result and this is the difference. You can actually use this one if you have a very bad green screen and you want to key it. Let's move over to the display and we can move to the display mat. This is set correctly to green and the split method is well done, which is okay. But as you can see, we have a slight blue tint actually. So what we want to do is to go back to the clean plate and remove the edge growth. And we want to copy the red value to the blue values. I mean, it's not always uh, that you have to copy the red value to the blue value, but you have to copy the smallest value to the other channel. As you can see, we've lost a little bit of green here and we have to bring it back in and this is done. And now we can go back the edges and move to the display result. And as you can see, now we have exactly the same uh, value for the three channels. And this means this will have no influence later in the process. So if we move to the dispel mat here and display the dispel mat, this is what you will be uh, seeing, something like this. This is a mat that uh, the macro will be using later in the process to give you the final result. I usually leave this as is, but depending, but depending on the footage, you will have to actually move the boost um, value here, the boost slider, or actually uh, move the low and high value. But I'm for the moment, I'm going to leave this as is and move to the next tab, which is the fringe. And this one, uh, you actually want this to be uh, as tight as possible as a mat. Now this is grayish, which is not something that we want. We may want this to be black. And let's see, yeah, it's perfectly black. And maybe make white the inside of our subject. And now that we have a fringe mat perfectly set, let's move to the final result. Now we have this transform tab, which we can use to actually move the subject or scale it or rotate as we actually want. And maybe I want to place the subject in the center of the frame. And now we can move to the background. And now we, using these sliders, uh, I can bring the background back to its uh, original color and value. So I want to do something like this maybe. And as you can see, I'm pretty much done. And that's it. Basically, as you can see, I have a pretty amazing result, mostly on the hair. I mean, the hair is actually fantastic. It's not, it's not the fastest, but as you can see, you get a very, very pleasant result. Okay, let's move to the next one. 
I will leave these here as is that so we can have a comparison let's add a delta here and let's make this delta here properly this time and add a clean plate Yeah, something like that. As you can see, we get a very nice result. It's not very far off the additive gear, which I have to say somehow prefer. As you can see, the, the result I think is nicer. But anyway, now that we have these um, Key, what we want to do instead of using the merge is use our add mix and the add mix will allow us let me make this one a little bit bigger to further control the fringes actually And that's it. Okay, so these are my th uh, four macro, I think. And it's the um, additive gear, the refine edge, the roto helper. Thanks, CB Super, for this. And the. Um, Add mix. These are the four macros that I wanted to talk about and I wanted to demo for you. You will be able to download them from Reactor very soon. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.